Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews. Today we're going to be looking at something really, really basic and that's how do we charge one of these LiPo batteries with one of these four button chargers of which there are many, many different types. And I'm going to step you through the process so that you can see exactly how to do it because although many people watching this video will be thinking it's so simple, anyone can do it. They tend to forget that if you're new to the hobby or new to electric, sometimes you don't know how to use the four button charger because a lot of them do not come with instructions. They just arrive in a box and you have to learn by trial and error sometimes. But fortunately, most of these four button chargers are pretty much the same. So what I'll show you here can be applied to almost any one of these chargers. And I'll now show you how to safely charge your LiPo. Now, the first and most obvious thing is that in order to charge this LiPo battery, we have to have a connector that matches the one that's on the battery. Now there are many different types. There are Dean's connectors. This is what they call an XT60 and it's quite common if you buy your batteries from Hobby King like these Zippy batteries which I've got here, brand new one. And so you need a plug that will plug into the side of the four button charger. Usually there are banana plugs here. So you get a couple of banana plugs and I have on the other end a matching connector like this. So that means we can then plug these two together to connect the battery to the charger. And another thing to watch I'm going to be showing you, showing you how to do a balance charge, which basically that works by making sure each individual cell, because these batteries have multiple cells, make sure that each individual cell is charged to the same level, because if they're not, then it can actually reduce the lifespan of your battery. It's quite important that the batteries are balance charged at least now and then, if not every time. So this is the balance connector, and that's what this little plug is for. So that's the main connector that delivers all the big heavy current when you're using the cell, and also when you're charging it. And this is the balance charger that basically just makes sure everything's topped up to the same level. So first of all, I'll show you how to do a normal charge without using the balance lead. You can do this charge, you know, four or five times in a row perhaps before you rebalance your battery, or you can balance charge every time. It's up to you. So let's look at how we program the charger to charge one of these batteries just using the main lead. So the first thing to do is to connect our charger up to a source of 12 volts. Now, most of these chargers come with two crocodile clips on a lead that plugs into the side of the charger or that may be permanently wired into the charger. It depends on your particular brand. The Turnergy one here, it has a, a bayonet plug, which is like that, that plugs into the side of the charger. As you can see, there's a connector on the side, just plugs into there like that. And then your crocodile clips go onto a source of 12 volts. Now that can be like this, a battery, a 12 volt battery, or it can be perhaps a modified PC power supply, as you'll see in one of my other videos, how to modify a PC power supply to deliver 12 volts to run your charger. And when you connect your charger to the 12 volts, you'll see that most of them will light up and you'll see some words appear on the little screen there. Now the next step is of course to plug the battery into the charger. So we take the little connector and we just push them together, making sure as I say that we've got matching connectors. So there we go, there we now have our battery connected to the charger via the charging lead. And we're all ready to start programming this little charger to the right battery type, current and voltage. Okay, so I'll power this one up again so you can see how it starts up. Here we go. This is a Turnergy charger, so we get the word Turnergy appearing. And then it says program select. In this case, it also says NIMH. Now that's the type of battery, and there are several different types of battery that these chargers will handle. NIMH is nickel metal hydride. And every time we press this left hand button, the one that's usually labeled type will stop, it will cycle through to the next type of battery. So NIMH, NICD, which is NICAD, PB, which is lead acid. And then we have a couple of options called save data, load data, and user set program. We can ignore those for the time being. I'll do a, a later video which will show you how to use those to save you a bit of time. And then we press it again. Eventually we come up with program select LiPo battery. That's the one we want. So we want to accept that. And so we press the enter key, which is usually the right hand button, press that, and now it says LiPo charge, which is exactly what we want. Of course, now we have to set the current and the voltage. And this is the current figure here. And this is the voltage here. Now the voltage is determined by the number of cells in your LiPo. Uh, this is set up for a two cell, see two S means two cells in series. And that would give you 7.4 volts. But the pack we want to charge, which is this one, is actually a three cell battery. So we need to change our charger to match the battery. So first of all, current wise, we'll have a look in here. We press to change the current and the voltage. We press that right hand button again, the enter button or the start button, just press it and release it. Now 
This figure is flashing. That's because that's the current. We're now in a position to change the current. The middle buttons, which we haven't used yet, enable us to go up and down the current range. So if I press plus, it goes to 2.3, 2.4. If I press minus, it goes 2.3, 2.1. So it goes down 0.1 of a volt every time I press the left-hand button and up 0.1, sorry, 0.1 of an amp every time I press the left-hand button and up 0.1 of an amp every time I press the right hand. If I hold the button down, it will scan quickly so I can go right down to a minimum of 0.1 amps. But this battery, as we can see from the label, is a 2200 battery. That means it's got 2.2 ampere hours. And normally, um, if we can, we try and charge at what we call 1C. And that is this figure here. And this is milliamps. So we divide that by 1000 to get the number of amps. 2200 milliamps divided by 1000 is 2.2 amps. So we need to use the plus and minus keys to get 2.2 amps appearing on that side. 2.3. There we go. 2.2. That is what we need to charge this battery. Then we want to enter that figure or accept it. So press the right hand button. And now the voltage is flashing. It says 7.4 volts to S. And this is in fact a three cell battery, which is 11.1 volts. So again, plus and minus keys enable us to change the figure that's flashing on the screen. I'll go up one and it says 11.1 volts, three series cells. So now we have that figure set correctly. We can enter it and everything stops flashing. It says LiPo charge, 2.2 amps, 11.1 volts, three cells, and but it's not charging yet. It's just sitting there telling us what we've set it up to. We need now to initiate the charge. We do that by holding down the enter button. And you hear it beep and it says battery check. Now it's sitting there, but it's still not charging because all it's done is check that the figures you've given it for voltage are roughly accurate and that there's a battery connected. Now, I'll just momentarily disconnect the battery well, first of all, we'll go back to where we were. Here we go. And I'll disconnect the battery for a moment by unplugging it. Now you can see, now there's no battery connected. If I now press and hold the start key to make it start, so it says connection break. So during the checking process, it's checked to make sure there's actually a battery connected. And the battery is not damaged or uh, too low in voltage or too high in voltage. So it does a little check to make sure you haven't really stuffed things up. And if as in this case, it finds an error, it will tell you. So I'll go back to that other screen. I'll plug the battery back in, like so. There we go, now it's plugged in. This time, I hold it down, and it says, ready to go, it says, I can press the cancel key, and you notice that there isn't actually, oh sorry, you can press the stop key to cancel, which is this left one. So I press that, it cancels the charge. We go back to there. If I hold it down, start the charge again, here we go. If I want to actually go ahead with the charging, I'm happy to continue and start charging the battery, I press enter to confirm. And as you can see, now it is charging. And we can see this time it's charging at 2.2 amps. And this is the actual voltage of the battery. Notice before we had 11.1 volts we wanted to charge it at. That is what we call the nominal voltage. That's what the battery is when it's about half charged, about 11.1 volts. Now we actually have to charge it up to about 12.6 volts, I think, to get it fully charged. So this figure will keep going up until it gets to about 12.6 volts or somewhere about there. And at that stage, the current will start to reduce. You'd see that as you went. The other figures here, this is the amount of time we've been charging for, 30 seconds. And this is the total amount of milliampere hours we've put into the battery so far. So we've put in 20 milliampere hours, 21, so forth. That, we would then just leave this battery, or we would keep an eye on it, because sometimes when you're charging LiPos, things can go astray and you may end up with a fire. So never leave a, a LiPo unattended when you're charging it. But suffice to say, this would charge our battery. But the thing is, it would charge all the batteries with the same amount of energy, regardless of whether some were more charged or less charged to start with. So we wouldn't end up with a balanced battery. If we want to balance charge our battery, we have to do things slightly differently, and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, let's look at how we balance charge our battery. Now let's, with, like before, we have the battery and the main lead is plugged in, and we also need to plug in this balance lead. Now some chargers have a little board that plugs in the side with all the little balance ports on, and others have simply have a connection on the side like this one where we plug our balance lead. And let's plug this balance lead in. You'll notice there are different size connectors on the balance port area. That's for a different number of cells. There's the two cell, there's the three cell, four cell, five cell, six cell. This is a three cell battery, so we put it in the only connector in which it will fit, like so. There we go, it's all plugged in. Put this back down on the bench, and our battery is ready to charge. And, but we can't use the same setting as before. We have to tell the charger to use a balance charge setting. In order to use the balance charge setting, and I'll start from scratch here. Let's assume that we're over here. We've got it set to, say, nickel metal. We choose 
lipo by stepping through do we get to lipo whoops i've gone too far and unfortunately you can't go back you've got to go right round again there we go lipo battery we enter that and it's remembered our current and our voltage from last time so that's fine but we don't want to do just a lipo charge we want to do a lipo balance so press the plus key or maybe called increment on your charger now it says lipo balance and that's exactly what we're looking for now these figures here may change when you select lipo balance because if i go back here for example and i so i change the the current down to 1.4 and enter it it will remember 1.4 for lipo charge but if i go to lipo balance remember when no lights are flashing i press the plus key it's a different current so we can set different currents for each type of charging in this case the current for charging is 2.2 which is fine but we could alter it by just as we did before pressing enter to make the figure flash and then the plus and minus to change it then enter to make this one flash and the plus and minus to change that if we wanted to but we're all set i want to do 2.2 amps it's a three cell battery we're doing a lipo balance now as before i hold down this button it does a check now i can say charge and everything looks like it did before the charge current the voltage the amount of time and the amount of milliampere hours we've put into the battery but there's one more thing we can do while it's doing its charge we can press this plus key and there's the individual voltage of each cell in the battery so now we can see that 3.91 3.92 3.92 this is pretty nearly balanced but what will happen is over time the cells will become slightly different in voltage and the balance charge will make sure they're all topped up to the same level and as before and I can go back to the original screen by pressing the plus. As before, we can leave the battery to charge. It will beep when the charge is done and tell us the battery is full. Instead of saying LI3S, it'll say full. And that's how we do our balance charge. Now, there are a couple of other options with these four button chargers when you're charging LiPo batteries. The next one, um, is say if we started with LiPo charge, then we also tried out LiPo balance. And there's another one called LiPo fast charge. What does this do? Well, it basically charges up to as near to charge as is necessary because when you're charging a lipo the last few percent of the charge take quite a bit of time so this will charge you to probably 95 percent of the battery's capacity but it'll do it in about two-thirds of the time so you save time you'll get an almost fully charged battery in a much shorter time than if you were charging with a balance or charging with a normal charge i don't usually use the fast charge very much i find it's not that useful but other people may find it handy but one more thing that is very very useful is this lipo storage and what does that mean well lipo batteries are interesting things if you leave them fully charged they'll puff that is to say the chemistry inside the battery may break down and that means that the battery becomes uh, full of gas and it doesn't hold a charge properly it doesn't have the same capacity and the charge leaks out more quickly so the battery gets aged before its time it's not good to have a puffed lipo and leaving them charged with a high voltage will cause that similarly if you leave a battery in a discharged state a fully discharged state the same thing will happen the chemistry inside will degrade very quickly the chemicals break down and you end up with a battery that doesn't last long so we have what's called a lipo storage a lipo storage is a charge that brings your battery cells to the same voltage on some cells it's 3.7 and on some it's 3.8 depending on your charger i think on this charger it's actually 3.8 i'm not sure let's anyway what i'll do is before i go there i'll accept i'll go enter i want to do a lipo storage now this is the current that it will charge your or discharge your battery at to bring the cells to 3.7 per cell but this is a three cell battery so just as before i have to set the voltage to three so there we go be 11.1 volts three cells and then i just hold down the start key and as before it checks now here we go it's now entered the lipo storage mode and what it's doing is if i just like with the balance i can look at the individual cells see these cells voltages are all a bit high for safe storage so what it's going to do is it's going to reduce the voltage on each of those cells by sucking power out of the battery until they all come down to 3.8 volts which is the best well this that's what this charger thinks is the best voltage to store them at as i say some other four button chargers i've looked at will take it down to 3.7 volts it's really not that critical but it, you want a battery that's neither fully discharged nor fully charged otherwise they'll age too quickly and you won't get full use out of them they won't last as long as if you store them in a storage charge mode now if you've charged your batteries up on the night before you're going flying don't worry about it leaving them overnight in a fully charged condition won't hurt them too much but if you are finished flying and you won't be flying for another week or two weeks 
can please storage charge them so that you'll get the maximum life out of them. It really, really does make a difference. And it's also safer because if you leave a fully charged LiPo laying around, there's a lot of energy in it which can be turned into heat and smoke and flame. It can burn your house down if something goes wrong. Whereas if you have it in storage charge, there is, it's about one third charge. So there's not as much energy in there. So there's less likely that it would cause a fire if something happened and, that, that, and you weren't there to keep an eye on it. So that's about it really. The final thing, if you want to stop at any time, you can press the the stop key, which is also labeled type, the one on the left, that will stop the charge or the discharge or the whatever you're doing, that will stop it from happening. So it goes back to the screen here where it says LiPo storage or whatever you had, had it set to in the first place. So that's about it. That's really all you need to know to charge your LiPos on one of these four button chargers. And as I say, um, they're all pretty much the same. Some of them have the buttons in a different place or they're labeled increment, decrement and so forth. But basically it's left to right and it's really, really simple. Now, what I'm going to be doing in the very near future is taking a look because in balance mode, I've found that some of these charges don't actually balance the batteries properly. They're, they're quite a way out. And so, although it says they're all balanced the same, sometimes they're not. So stay, watch, stay watching for that video, which will be coming up very soon, telling you, uh, if necessary, how to recalibrate your four button charger to give you the longest life from your battery by making sure that all the cells are correctly charged. Thank you for watching. This is another RC Model Reviews video on YouTube.